Hello, everybody, and thank you once again for joining me for The Rant Packs, the weekly show where I talk about the state of the game, some of my own thoughts and things that I think could be improvements. In this episode, I want to cover three things that Magic the Gathering so desperately needs to add to the arena for it to make the splash I think that it could make. My name is Justice. My handle is Sarkantuna. Make sure you subscribe for more content like this. I do deck techs. I do all the events. I try and draft about once a week, like a real draft or a ranked draft. Um, sometimes they do a draft event that's a little bit janky, like this most recent Omniscience draft was a little fun um, and, and funny. It's just, you know, sometimes you lose those. And I feel like in those events, you don't really increase your skill. But nevertheless, I try and cover them. I try and do all the uh, the draft events. So make sure you subscribe for content like that coming up. And uh, deck techs. And here, Ravnica Allegiance, I'm going to open up these packs. I'm all free to play also. And, and for me, I think that's uh, an important angle to discuss. So today I want to talk about three things that Magic the Gathering, the arena specifically, needs to add to its lineup in order for it to be a successful game. The first being a Mac client. I know that that's been a pain point for Magic uh, MTG Online, and, and I think it's one of the reasons that Hearthstone is the like the number one most popular game, uh, like online card game, uh, easily. I mean, it sur supplanted Magic pretty quickly when it came out, um, but I don't think it was any specific design element other than the accessibility of it. I mean, you could get it on PC, on Mac, on, on tablet initially right away, and it wasn't released to iPhone until later, and like iPhone, Android phones, like mobile phones, right? Um, and I think one of the reasons why Hearthstone was more successful initially was its accessibility. And Magic the Arena needs to do that. They need to have a Mac client. They need to have um, I, at least tablets. Maybe there could be an argument made that the game wouldn't fit on the screen of an iPhone. That's hogwash at will. But maybe if they're saying, well, it would be like the land. If you want to manually tap your lands, it would be too small on the little iPhone screen sometimes. I, I get that. Hey, that's fine. If that's the argument that somebody wants to make, I will believe it. And I'll move on with my life and I'll play on a tablet or something if I'm mobile and have to like get my fix, whatever. Um, but they need to do like a Mac client. And there's really no excuses. Uh, it's It's 2019. Like, guys, come on, get that stuff going. It's, you can do it. I know you can do it. It's not that hard to do. Um, and, and I don't want to hear that it is hard to do. They have all of the resources already made, like all the digital resources are made. Uh, all the image files talk among both operating systems. It's not in it, it, it rocket science. They can do it. The other thing this game needs that I think would be a huge increase in in revenue of all things. I mean, it's not like a money grab, but it's foils. And I don't mean full animated artwork on the cards. Me as a player, I'm actually totally fine with just the still shot of the card art. I think the card art is beautiful on most of the cards. I think uh, just adding, I think it's like 17 backgrounds or 17 card borders that are just in foil, right? So you got foil monocolors, there's five, foil guild colors, there's another 10 or golds. Then like artifacts and lands, like just add, add the foils, right? It, I don't need animated cards. I don't need to have an effect on every card. That's fine. I've been playing this game for 20 years without effects. Like, it's, it's, we're used to it. It's fine. But I remember when the first foils came out in Urza's Legacy, I was, I was there, man. I was at that, at that opening or that pre release. I wasn't even a pre release party. Those were just release parties. And, and we did this draft. It was an open draft. So we opened up every pack and put them on the table. And I got to pick first this pack, and there was a foil rare. It was a foil eviscerator, the first one we've seen at that, uh, at that gaming store. And I, I picked it, this guy right here. I lost the draft because it was a terrible card to play. Like, it never saw any playtime. But I was like, I'm taking the foil rare, man. Uh, and, and they need to be added to the game in some sort of way to where if I want to spend some money on the game, like if I put my dollars into this game then give me more of a chance to get that foil just to have the cosmetics of it. Because then I feel like as a free-to-play player or a budget player even, um, I, I won't feel like players who spend more money have more of an advantage over me to win the games. Um, and the other thing about, about this game that I really like, actually, is the economy. As a free-to-play player, I hit Mythic last season. I'm on pace to hit it again this season pretty quickly. It's As of the recording of this video, it's the 11th of March. Um, it should go live hopefully tomorrow, so the 12th of March. I'm in, I should be Diamond Tier tier 2, if with any luck. 
Um, so I should be able to hit Mythic again pretty quickly in this month and then play into Mythic a little bit at the end of the month. Um, so I'm not even too upset about the ladder system for free to play. The land bases are kind of bugging me. You know, I, I don't have all the lands for the, the deck colors that I want, but eventually I should get there uh, with my three weekly packs. I am going to save up my gold. I could probably buy some. Uh, I mean, if I if I wanted to spend my gold on packs now, I could, but I think it's smarter to save my money. So as a free to play budget player, I'm I'm good with the economy orders. I love it. Uh, and I've been doing, I know I brought this up last week, I think, or maybe two weeks ago, but I was like comparing this game to Hearthstone, uh, like <laughs> the, the ladder climb specifically. But man, <laughs> it took me like three days to get bored of Hearthstone again. It is not a fun game. It's just boring. It's so linear. It's so, it's so like drab is the only thing I could think of to describe it. It's not very interesting. It is not very creative at all. Uh, if you want to play competitively, you're going to fit into one of um, a couple of decks, and I think that's it. You know, maybe six or seven. Um, and for a game where there's nine classes, that's unacceptable. Any one of those nine classes should be able to put up a pretty good fight. Um, you just don't see you don't see a lot of shamans because it's it's weird. But you can never change your hero power in that game. Um, and I think the creativity that Magic brings, even with the mana screw, is a whole lot better. Than, uh, than anything that Hearthstone, or any other digital card games. I've been playing a few other digital card games, um, and this one's uh, one of the best. I think there's an argument to be made for games like Elder Scrolls Legends. That game's pretty interesting, too, except the the updates are not as frequent. I don't mean updates like digitally, like bug fixes. I mean content updates. Like, where's, where's the cards, man? Like, we need... The whole beauty of Magic is that they built it so they could go anywhere. They could go to a plane in Magic... Where there's aliens and spaceships, and all of us, all of us would buy it. Like hook, line, and sinker, we're just instantly there. Like, oh yeah, they're going to like the Mars plane. Cool, right on. And the planeswalkers are like, like, meet meep aliens or whatever. You know what I mean? But like, you guys get it, right? Like we just we're planeswalkers. Like, okay, going to a new plane. Found one. Awesome. So brilliant storyline with this game. Back to more of the free to play stuff. Um, the vault update for me. I'm at 120, so 20% past this. And I know there's another way to look this up. Uh, somebody taught me that last week, which is kind of cool, but I do like to see it here just on the mouse over, and that way everybody else can see it too. Um, so this goes up pretty frequently just throughout the week as I get the uncommon. Uh, you know, I don't get it every day, but, but most days I'll get a few uncommons out of my wins. I am back to 1740 gold, or gems rather. So I may be on the hook to spend some money when War of the Spark comes out next time around to get the gems necessary to do the sealed events, which is, that's something that we do. Um, and then I guess I'll probably have to refer to myself as a budget player versus free to play. Um, but there's no harm in that. If you spend 20 bucks every three months, you're still, still doing it right. And then I've got 14,600 gold and that's cooking up nicely. So I'll be able to spend i should be able to have close to forty thousand when war of the spark comes out at this rate and then i can open up a bunch of packs and be happy with the uh, to kickstart that collection um i also love wild cards so by comparison to other games you have to use like your gems resource to buy cards and it is ridiculously expensive in this game you get like this would be the equivalent of like 10,000 dust in Hearthstone, right? Like, that's the equivalent of what I have saved up, and I'm barely trying. So, I mean, I spend them on decks. Like, it's it's pretty good. I, I like this economy quite a bit. Um, and plus, you get three packs a week versus, like, one pack a week from other games, or some, some other games do a, a resource every day. I like how they just hand you packs, and then the packs also help you get your wild cards. So today, I will get at least one more rare wild card. That'll give me three. And now I won't get an uncommon, but I, I should get an uncommon in the packs I open. Plus more than 20% in the vault. So let's take a look and see what happens. So got the rare. Did not get another wild card, but that's okay. Wilderness Wreck, that's cool. Zagana, I got a few of these. Um, not a top tier card, but that's okay. I do like Merfolks, so that's cool. Pack number two, we are looking at Night of the Last Breath. That's okay, Orzhov Enforcer. That's cool. Little afterlife action. Blade Brand again. So, yeah, I mean, nothing nothing too crazy. An Absorb, highly necessary for any... This is a staple in any, uh, like, Azorius-colored control deck. As per control, Absorb is the, 
is the new normal for counter spells. So that makes me happy. I needed one more of those. Actually, I think that's my third copy of it. So another another wild card, and this is something that I, I'm so happy they did this. Uh, and I didn't realize it until I started dabbling in other card games again. But adding a wild card in a pack that I just bought and the vault, it's... This economy is actually really good. I like it a lot. I like High Alert, too. I'm going to have to make a High Alert themed deck. It's not my favorite way to play. All right. Excellent. Needed one of those. This would have gone in my, um, in my Afterlife deck I just did if I had it. Uh, but obviously this is going to be a very strong uh, very strong game winning card when it comes out on turn 6 if you have any tokens now they're 2-2s two and your opponent's creatures are 1-1 are one, one weaker which is pretty awesome so cool, good 3 packs thanks wizards so now let's check the vault progress so we had 120 and we're at 122 so 2% that's pretty weak actually So, um, but it does grow it grew about 10 to 12 percent over the course of the last week which i'm not too upset about i kind of like the speed with which it grows i kind of like how quickly i'm able to get wild cards uh, i got one uh, one common and only one rare out of this these three packs but for the most part in three packs we will get about two commons and an uncommon um, obviously i needed all those uncommons though so i'm pretty happy um, with the way my collection is growing and just to give us Give us a quick update on the collection for Ravnica Allegiance. I almost have the full set. So if we look at Allegiance, collected and not collected, almost every page is filled out, at least at least as a one-off. Like, I could use two more Tithe Takers. Uh, this is a very strong, uh, not just mono-white, but even even in, like, decks that run white now. Like, I mean, this could go in Boros. It could go in uh, Selesnia, for sure. Every deck running white could run Tithe Taker. Uh, I don't have any Angels of Grace yet. So, when those come, they come. Not really worried about it. Not really making a deck out of Angel of Grace just yet. Um, I don't have any Skatewing Spies, and my theory is, yeah, I could make them just for the completism of the thing, but I'm not going to make them just yet because I'm still opening packs of Allegiance. You know what I mean? So as long as they're going to hand me three weekly packs of this set, I'm not going to make any uncommons or commons unnecessarily. I do believe we're about to run into a common that I'm missing. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I, maybe I picked it up. Um... So, Awaken the Erstwhile, don't have any, don't have any Haunts of the High Tower. I'm okay with that. Not looking to make a deck out of these just yet, so I'm okay with letting them sit while I'm still opening packs. See, I mean, it's it's getting there. No Mirror Matches, no Electro Dominance. This is a shame. I wanted to play with this card. Uh, but now that I got three wild cards, maybe I'll make one and see if I can't find a way to use it as a one-of. It's kind of weird. I don't have the alternate art Guildgate. Again, I'm not worried about it. Um, it's just a, just a different color. Or different, uh, different artwork. No big deal. <clears throat> Cut a lot. I mean, I got three Kayas without... I didn't craft a single one. I just found them in packs. I could have got better Mythics, I suppose. But, you know, I'm not unhappy about any of this. I did apply both of the Planeswalker decks to my collection. And I may be doing some giveaways for the Planeswalker decks coming up in War of the Spark. I think that's something that, uh, that we want to do here on this channel. Especially because we're all about free-to-play, so... Look for that coming up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so other than the optional art lands, no, uh, that's cool. <laughs> that's a cool, cool looking artwork. And see what I mean? Like, the artwork is so interesting and diverse in this game. It's just awesome. So, yeah, there's the collection. It's coming along. This, this infuriates me. I haven't got a single Gate Colossus. Like, what's, <laughs> why, why not? Um, I could make them, though, and it might be time to make some Gate Colossuses and put together a Gate deck. Um, I have four Growth Spirals, so I've got a lot of the other staples involved in that deck, so I may, I might give it a shot. I might make it, um, you know, and see what we can, uh, what we can come up with there. But, you know, thanks, you guys, for watching. Thanks for all your support. I appreciate it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, if you're still with me, do remember to subscribe for uh, more content like this. Like I said, I do this. I do deck techs. I do it all. Thanks so much. Have a good one.